Okay, Year 10s, welcome to Digital Delivery Day number two. Uh, you lucky people get to stay at home or we have to go to work. Uh, today we're going to be looking at sketching graphs by completing the square. Um, so if we think about it previously, we know that this graph is in turning point form. Of course, our turning point is H, K. But if we get it in this form, a standard form, we have to complete the square to get it into turning point form. Okay, once we've got it in turning point form, we've got the turning point. Um, we can find x and y intercepts as well, uh, but we're just going to start off by putting it into turning point form. Okay, so I've got a graph here. I'm not going to show it to you yet. I need to complete the square and hence sketch the graph of. So, first thing here. I've got y equals x squared plus 6x. I'm just going to move my 13 over here because I don't need to use that at the moment. That doesn't take part in our completing the square. Um, if I halve 6, I get 6 on 2. And I square it. Half of 6, 6 on 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So I add 9 on to make this bit here a perfect square. Uh, and then because I've added 9 on, I don't want to change the equation, so I've got to subtract 9. Okay? So from here, we always say that this is x, because that's a plus, plus a half of that value, 3, all squared. And then we have got negative 9 plus 13, which is plus 4. Okay, so... Our turning point is negative 3, because it's the opposite sign, plus 4. What's the shape of the graph? Well, it's a positive x squared, so we know it's got to have a positive sort of shape. So I call it a smiley face, because it's positive. Okay, so if we know it's a smiley face. If we let x equals 0, y equals 13, so we've got our y-intercept. So we've got our turning point, which is negative 3, 4. So let's say here's negative 3. That's also our axis of symmetry is our turning point. So our axis of symmetry is negative 3. So it's the x value of our turning point. So it's got to be symmetrical about the line x equals negative 3. We also know we've got a y-intercept of, I'm going to say, 0, 13. We know we've got a turning point at negative 3. Oops, that probably isn't to scale. So we said 4 is there. Negative 3, 4, there's our turning point. Negative 3, 4. We know we've got to go through this point. Because if we go 3 to the... Uh, 3 to the right, then up 13, we go through that point. If we go 3 to the left and up 13, we've got to go through this point. We call that using symmetry. Okay, so we know this point here is going to be negative 6, 13. Well, we know there's no x-intercepts because it's been translated upwards and it's a smiley face. Let's see how we went. We've got a vertex or turning point at 3, negative 4. It's the same as ours. We've got a y-intercept at 0, 13. Well, I think we did pretty well. And our axis for symmetry is x equals negative 3. Okay, now this one here is a bit nastier because it's got that negative out the front. So we know it's negative. So it's going to have a sad face upside down. Okay, let's do the same with completing the square. Why? Because I'm going to move my negative 5 over to here, because we don't need to worry about that. We just want to make this a perfect square. We've got to take out a negative, so we're going to have x squared plus 3x. Now this is why I don't like to work with decimals, I like to work with fractions, because if I have 3, that's 3 on 2, and I square it, I get 9 on 4. 
So I can say I add 9 on 4 to make this a perfect square. Now usually I would say, oh, I've added 9 on 4, so I've got to take 9 on 4 off. However, we haven't really added 9 on 4, we've subtracted 9 on 4 because we've got a negative out the front. So because there's a negative out the front multiplying the 9 on 4, the opposite of minus 9 on 4 is plus 9 on 4. Okay, so then we end up with negative x plus a half of that value, 3 on 2 squared. And then I've got plus 9 on 4. Now because this is an on 4, I'm going to make it on 4 so it's easy to add together. So minus 20 on 4. We end up with negative x plus 3 on 2 squared. And then I'm going to get negative 11 on 4. So we can say our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3 on 2. Our turning point is at negative 3 on 2. Oops. Negative 11 on 4. Um, we've got an upside down. So if it's been moved to the left and down and it's upside down, We've got no x-intercepts, and our y-intercept, we know we let x equal 0, and if we do that and put that into up here, that's going to be 0, that's going to be 0, we're going to end up with negative 5. Or you could sub it into this thing here, but it's a lot harder, I wouldn't do that. Okay, so there's our graph here. We know our axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 3 on 2. We said that here. We know our turning point is negative 3 on 2, negative 11 on 4, which is here. We know our y-intercept is negative 5, and it's an upside-down parabola, so it's going to have that shape. That's everything. It's not too bad, is it? Okay, so first we completed the square. We found our axis of symmetry. Our turning point, we know there's no x-intercepts because it's a, an upside down, a sad face, and it's been moved left and down, so it can't possibly go through the x-axis. Um, we draw our axis for symmetry, put our y-intercept and our turning point on, and then draw the shape of our graph. Okay, sketch the following problems. First, find the y-intercept and then complete the square to find the axis for symmetry and the vertex, then find the x-intercepts if they exist. Okay, so y-intercept, oops, let x equal 0. Here we're going to get y equals 0. Then complete the square to find the axis of symmetry. Okay, so we've got 1.00. If we complete the square, x squared, might, we've got nothing added on here, so just think of that as plus 0 x squared minus 6x, if we halve 6, oops, 6 on 2, and then square it, we get 3 squared, which is 9, so plus 9. Because I've added 9 on, I've got to subtract 9. So we end up with x minus, because we've got a minus, half of this value, 3, all squared. We know that this and this are the same. That's why we halve this value and squared it, to make it a perfect square. And of course, we've got our minus 9. So from here, we can say our axis of symmetry is x equals 3. Our turning point is uh, 3, negative 9. Got our y-intercept, and we've got the point 0, 0. For your x-intercepts, y equals 0, so you get 0 equals x, x minus 6, because I can take out x as a common factor. Therefore, x equals 0 and 6. Um, it makes sense that our turning point is at 3, because remember, our x-intercepts, uh, halfway between our x-intercepts is where our turning point occurs. Um, don't forget, you can also find out where... Um, the turning point, uh, sorry, where the um, x value of the turning point is. Remember if you've got it in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. 
the turning point, the x value of the turning point is negative b on 2a. So in this case here, just to show you, that's going to, b is going to be negative, negative 6, negative, negative 6 on 2 times 1, which is 6 on 2, which is 3, what we got there. If we go back here, um, we've got y equals negative x squared minus 3x minus 5. And our x value of our turning point, our axis of symmetry, it's the same thing. Negative, negative 3 on 2 times, because that's b, and then that's a, negative 1. So I end up with 3 on negative 2, or negative 3 on 2, which was our axis of symmetry. And of course, this one here, I've got y equals x squared plus 6x plus 13. So x is negative b on 2 times a, a is 1. So I get negative 3, which of course is our turning point here. So that's another way you can find the turning point if you've got a parabola. It's always negative b on 2a. Okay, so we know our axis of symmetry is x equals 3. And 3, negative 9 is our turning point. We go through 6 and 0. Remember, if it says to label coordinates, you need to put 6, 0, and 0, 0. And there's our graph. OK. OK, this one looks like it's going to be pretty similar. But in this case here, let's go with pink. I think some of the boys in our class would like pink. Deshaun, maybe Gokul, Tony. Actually, I think all of them would like pink. Okay, sketch the following parabolas. First, find the y-intercept. So if we let x equals 0. My handwriting's getting bad. I must be getting tired. Let x equals 0. y equals 0 squared minus 10 times 0. Negative 0 squared. 0. So if x equals 0 and y equals 0, we know that one of the intercepts must be x equals 0. Okay, complete the square. So y equals negative x squared plus 10x. Remember, because we've taken a minus out, that'll become a plus. If we halve 10 and square it, we get 5 squared, which is 25. Now, I've got to add 25 on to make it a perfect square. Usually, I'd subtract 25. But if we have a look here, negative times 25 is negative 25. The opposite of that is plus 25. OK. So we know we can say negative x plus 5 squared and then plus 25. So our axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5. We could also do our test y equals negative x squared minus 10x. Um, so x equals negative b, so negative negative 10 on 2 times a, which is negative 1. So I get 10 on negative 2, which is negative 5. We got the same value, so we know it's correct. Okay, our turning point is at negative 5, 25. Our x-intercepts let x, uh, y equals 0, sorry, y equals 0 for an intercept, therefore 0 equals negative x squared minus 10x, we can take out a negative x, and we've got x plus 10, so therefore x equals 0 and minus 10, and we know that our turning point occurs halfway between those two intercepts, so if I did 0, oh, just to make it easier, negative 10, plus 0 on 2, it's negative 5. So that makes sense that that matches up with that, and it matches up with that. That's where our axis of symmetry, also our turning point, halfway between the x-intercepts. Okay, so then we grab everything that we know. We've got 0, 0 for our y-int. Our x-ints are 0, 0, and negative 10, 0. x-ints. 
x equals negative 5 is our axis of symmetry. And turning point is negative 5, 25. So then we go and put it all on the graph. So axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 5. Now, it's not normal to draw these on the graph. You don't really ever do them in year 11 and 12. They don't talk about axis of symmetry, but um, at least you know what it is. Our turning point or our vertex, it's the same thing, is negative 5, 25. And we have a shape like this, so negative 10, 0, and 0, 0. There's our graph. Okay. Here we go, another one. Sketch the graph of the following parabolas. First, find the y-intercept, then complete the square to find the axis for symmetry and the vertex of the parabola. Now, before we go on and do this, we've got the graph down there, but before we go on and do this, I'm just going to show you how to complete the square again in your CAS, if you can't remember. So x squared plus 6x minus 7. So we go into conics. We go y equals x squared plus 6x minus 7. Was that it? Yep. Okay. So we've got that there. Then we go click on this. And we want to change it into turning point form. Click OK. So we should have x plus 3 squared minus 16. Of course, you can sketch it. You just click that button. So from here, we can see that our... I wonder if we can get x intercepts. x intercepts. Negative. So there's your two x intercepts. It's written down here. And we can also get our zoom out, zoom auto, same thing. Analysis G solve. Hmm. Doesn't look like we can get our minimums or maximums. But we know it'll occur halfway between 1 and negative 7, which is negative 3. So I can say Y cal when X is negative 3. And that'll tell us negative 3. Oh, we also have it in turning point form, silly me. Okay. So, let's go back to here. Okay, first find the y-intercept. So, let x equal 0, therefore y equals negative 7. Because that's 0, that's 0, that's going to be negative 7. Okay, so there's our first point, 0, negative 7. If you want to, a good thing to do is, as you go, mark everything out. So, go down to your graph, put 0, negative 7. So you know it's got to go through that point. Okay, complete the square. Y equals x squared plus 6x. Let's move our negative 7 over because we don't need to worry about that. If I halve 6 and I square it, I get 3 squared, which is 9. I've added 9 on. There's no negative out the front or any no number out the front, so I can just take 9 off. So we end up with x plus 1 half of 6, 3 squared minus 16 so my axis of symmetry is x equals negative 3 my turning point is negative 3 negative 16 my x intercepts let y equal 0 so if we let y equal 0 we get 0 equals x squared plus 6x minus 7 0 equals, we've got to factorise it. So, x times x is x squared. 7, the two thing, there's only two things that can multiply to give 7, a 7 and 1. If I want to end up with a plus 6, it's got to be plus 7 and minus 1, because I don't want to end up with a negative 7 at the end. So, therefore, we get x equals negative 7 or 1. So, negative 7, 0 or 1, 0. Then when we go to sketch it, we had our axis of symmetry was x equals negative 3. We had our turning point at negative 3, negative 16. We know we had an intercept at 1, 0, and another intercept at negative 7, 0. So if it asks you for coordinates, you should really plot those two points. I don't know whether this did, but um, it's always a good idea. Okay, so there's our graph. Of course, I've made it a bit uglier. But we've got our axis of symmetry, 
our x-intercepts, our turning point, and our y-intercept. Oh, last one. Okay, sketch the following parabolas. First, find the y-intercept, then complete the square to find the axis of symmetry. Now, a good idea, um, if, you, if you keep stuffing up completing the square, you can always check it on your cars. I'm just going to make this a bit small. Okay, so if we let x equals 0, y equals negative 5, because that equals 0, that equals 0. Okay, complete the square. y oops, is equal to, take out a negative, move the negative 5 over to here by itself, because it, it isn't affected when we complete the square. x squared plus 3x. When I halve 3, I get 3 on 2. When I square it, I get 9 on 4. Oops. So I say plus 9 on 4. Now usually I would take away 9 on 4, but if we have a look here, we've got negative 9 on 4, because there's a negative out the front. The opposite of minus 9 on 4 is plus 9 on 4. So we end up with negative x plus a half of that value, 3 on 2 squared. I've got plus 9 on 4 minus 20 on 4 because I need to put them on a common denominator. So I say negative x plus 3 on 2 squared minus 11 on 4. So don't forget this graph is a sad face because it's negative. So sad face. My axis of symmetry. Sim. Symmetry is uh, x equals negative 3 on 2. My turning point is negative 3 on 2, negative 11 on 4. Now remember we can check this, minus x squared minus 3x minus 5. So y equals minus x squared minus 3x minus 5. We can sketch it. We can change it into turning point form. Okay, so we know that's right, what we did. Is there any x-intercepts? Nope. How could we check if there's x-intercepts? Use our discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. If it's greater than 0, we have two solutions. If it's greater than 0 and it's a perfect square, we have two uh, rational solutions. That means we can factorize it. Uh, if it's equal to zero, we have one solution. And if it's less than zero, we have no solutions. Because you can't square it a negative number. Okay, so our discriminants, negative, uh, it's b squared, negative 3 squared, minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is negative 5. I get 9 minus, negative 4 times negative 1 is 4, times negative 5 is minus 20. Negative 11, so we have no solutions. Therefore, no x-intercepts. Okay, so from this graph, the main thing we need is our axis of symmetry, our turning point, and our y-intercept. So we know our axis of symmetry. Well, have I already done this question? I have up here. Hopefully you got the same answer. <laughs> we did. Okay, it looks like I've stuffed up and done the wrong question. Because here it's negative x squared plus 8x plus 13. Let's do that one. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if you can use white on this. Get rid of that. Make it go really thick. Okay, we're going to have to draw our own graph too. <clears throat> All right, and we want to change back to pink. Okay, y equals negative x squared 
plus 8x plus 13. So from here, let x equals 0, y equals 13, uh, y equals negative x. So we've got to complete the square. So we'll take out a negative x squared minus 8x, move our plus 13 over. If we have 8, we get 4. When we square it, we get 16. So I've got to say plus 16. Now, usually I would subtract 16, but we don't subtract because we've got a negative out the front. So we've really taken 16 off. We have to add 16. So we end up with negative x minus 4 squared. Those two things are exactly the same. Plus 29. So my turning point is at 4, 29, opposite sign, same sign. Axis of symmetry is x equals 4. Now I know we're going to have y-intercepts this time because it's an upside down smiley face and it's got a y-intercept of 13. So it's got to be moved up. Oh, we've got the right graph there at least. Okay, so... Can we factorize this thing? No, we can't. Because if we look at this, okay, we could use the quadratic formula. So y equals negative x squared plus 8x plus 13. a equals negative 1, b equals 8, c equals 13. x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 1, times c, which is 13, all on 2a, 2 times negative 1. Okay, we have negative 8 plus or minus. Under here, we're going to get 64 plus, because we've got two negatives, 4 times 13, which I think is 52. So we get, oh, we didn't do it in here, 106, is that right, 64 plus 52 is 100 and, ah, 116, well, that doesn't seem right, okay, I know 4 goes into that, 4 times 25 and 4 is 29, so it's the same as root 4 times 29, which is 2 root 29. So here we can say negative 8 plus or minus 2 root 29 on negative 2. Now when I divide 3 by negative 2, I'm going to get 4, because uh, that will cancel with that and make it a 4, and that'll make it positive. And then here, the plus or minus still stays as plus or minus, because the minus will become a plus, and the plus will become a minus. Then we cross out the 2. So it's 4 plus or minus, root 29. Okay, so we know this is going to be 4 plus root 29, 0. This one's going to be 4 minus root 29, 0. This is going to be 16, was it? Yep, uh, was it? 13. So 0, 13. And we know we've got 4. That's an axis of symmetry. x equals 4. So our graph's going to look like that. Now, oh, if you didn't know how to, to where to put these points, the 4 minus and the 4 plus, Remember, we can say 4 plus root 29. What's root 29? Well, we know root 25 is 5 and root 36 is 6. So therefore, root 29, it's a bit, it's closer to 5. So let's say 5.4. So we can say 4 plus 5.4, which is about 9.4. And 4 minus 5.4, which is about negative 1.4. So there's our values. That's about negative 1.4. And that value there 
there is about 9.4. But of course, when you label them, you put 4 minus root 29, 0, and 4 plus root 29, 0. Okay, and you can also find those intercepts by using your CAS. So negative x squared plus 8x plus 13. Uh, where are we? Negative x squared plus 8x plus 13. Sketch it. That looks the same as ours. You can get your turn turning point. Analysis G solve max, because it's a maximum, 429. Analysis G solve root will give you your x intercept, but it's a decimal. So negative 1.4, we're pretty close with our guess of negative 1.4, and 9.4 once we round it. But that's not our exact value, so what we can do is copy that, go out into main, paste it. I want to know when y equals 0, so I set it equal to 0. Then we go interactive, highlight it, interactive advanced solve, and that gives us 4 minus root 29 or 4 plus root 29. If you want to change it to a decimal, negative 1.385, 9.385. So there's our solutions. Um, and don't forget, if you needed to complete the square, edit, copy, go into conics, delete what's in there, edit, paste. You need to put y equals at the start, change it into turning point form. So there's our turning point form. Okay, so hopefully you get how to draw parabolas, find x-intercepts, y-intercepts, turning points, axes of symmetry. Um, don't forget your turning point also occurs at x equals negative b on 2a. So we had to use this one. x would equal negative 8 on 2 times 1, which is negative 4. Whoa. That's negative 1. So that's going to be plus 4, because that and that need to be the same, which they are. Okay, so good luck at uh, graphing parabolas by completing the square. Of course, it's lesson two in uh, in your OneNote. Um, so it's a lesson two questions. Uh, if you've got any questions, Mr. NG and I will be sitting there awaiting your questions. Okay, good luck, guys. Bye.